Hi, you right, guys? Another mishmashy type video, just to show you what I've been getting up to in the last couple of days or so. The highlight of the video is the Tom Tato reveal at the end. Anyway, what I'm doing here is preparing a garlic from Tesco 28p, taking all the skin off, trimming the root, taking the tops off and using tweezers to clean it up totally, and then plonking it in a little shot glass full of water. Now I've seen this on uh, an Instagram reel and it grows like mad so I thought I'd give it a go. And here we are two days later. Look at those roots. And can you see where they're growing from? Right at the centre next to the basal core. And this is one good reason why you never pluck the cloves off the bulb before you plant them. Too much risk of damage. Well, there we are then, that's the last of the tumblers, another half a kilo. That's taken up to just, just, just six kilos between for the five plants. So what's that, 1.2 kilos a plant, very good, very good. Thing is, it's probably more than that because I've been uh, eating the odd one or two or a hundred as I pass. So, <laughs> so they're definitely on the list for next year. So again, I'm just going to rinse these and uh, stick them on a tray which will send the exposure crazy. There we are, sticking a tray in the freezer. So. Okay then, on to a new experiment for me for next year. True potato seeds. I have never ever grown potato seed before. So this year I've left a few flowers growing and those funny little green things that look like tomatoes have them um, shot up. And I've picked them off and left them in a tray. Some have gone really, really mouldy and these are the ones I'm washing off now, taking the skin off and saving the seeds. The ones that are still solid I've cut in half just to get the rotting process started. I don't know how viable these seeds will be so I'll process a few more just in case. These have come off all different types of potatoes so no idea what we got. Could be a future winner. I was thinking for one moment that the Christmas spuds have got blight, but it doesn't really. Oh, it is, it's gone black. Look, well, they didn't last long, it's only the second week of October. Well, best cut them off then. No idea what's under there. Much leaf damage though. I think I might pick another cauliflower. Yeah, that's the biggest one there, about six inches. They're doing pretty well this year. Then cleared this bed and I've planted ooh, what way 15 cauliflower Amsterdam and they are interplanted that you but you can't see them interplanted with um, onion radar. It's supposed to be a good companion plant. Um, I've cleared all the uh, marrows and pumpkins, squashes, and emptied that compost bin at the far end, believe it or not. 
some good compost. Here it is. Some there. Some there. This needs finishing off this one. Look at that bed. Look how, look how that's gone. So that'll be going this winter probably. And when that uh, compost bin, when it squashes down a bit, the rest of the uh, marrow stuff will go in there. Might even get the strimmer actually for one last haircut. Yeah, that'll do. Do that. Had a bit of pigeon damage, I think. Definitely not slugs, definitely pigeons. You can tell by the way the uh, outside the leaves have been eaten away, look. Classic pigeon damage. So I'll give them a, a spray with grazers. Can't remember which one it is now. And they're, they're coming back because they were worse than that the other day. They're growing again. Blooming white fly. I've never seen anything like it. The year of the white fly. Anyway, Brussels are uh, coming on nicely. Ready for Christmas. But don't forget, Brussels are for life, not just Christmas. Look at it. I don't suppose it's doing much harm, but... Look at that. Like a blooming snowstorm. My rosemary bush died a few years back in the drought and I've been living off other people's at the moment so I've got some cuttings, I've taken some cuttings off a healthy bush I've got this um, Levington Essentials compost going to put a good dose of perlite in it So let's get the uh, compost ready, just checking it Yeah, it seems alright I don't want any massive sticks in it, you know what I mean? Or plastic. <laughs> or plant pots. Crazy, isn't it? It's not bad compost really, like I keep saying, we're going to have to get used to it. That's the way of the future, I'm afraid. Right, cuttings. Right, decent cutting. Four to six inches long, just below a leaf joint. Take the bottom leaves off. With the hormone root and powder, dip a hole, don't push it in, firm it in. So easy. And water from above just to settle the compost around. And in a cold frame or somewhere sheltered. In my case, I just put it in the cold greenhouse for now. And then have a check on it in a couple of weeks, and there should be a few roots. Oh, nice and easy. I reckon it's time to uh, finish off the harvest on the tom tato. So there you are, potato in the bottom, tomatoes at the top. So let's go cut a few off. It's been quite good so far actually. What I have noticed is the tomatoes are a lot smaller than the, uh, the craigella that's growing on its own. And two have fallen off with me carrying it through. So I'm going to cut the red ones off. And the green ones, I'll, um, I'll ripen those indoors. But I've still got to weigh them, haven't I? Yeah, so. Is that it? Oh, there's one there. Whether it'll ripen or not, I don't know, but uh, well, there we are. I can weigh these now. I don't think some of the little green ones will uh, come to anything, but go and get the uh, the total weight of the Craigella on the Tom Tato. Okay then, 
The total weight of all the Craig Ellers off the Tom Tato, 2.2 kilos. So I'm quite happy with that. Right, there we are. And the graph's still there, and we've got new growth. <laughs> so let's see what's uh, in here then. Well, we got one. Got two. <laughs> well, it knocked me over with a feather. So, looks like all the potato energy went into making tomatoes. Yep. <laughs> so, there we are. <laughs> that was different. I was hoping to try this again next year, but I'm not going to bother now, that's for sure. Or will I? <laughs> It's not so much a spill of beans, guys, it's more of a request for help. You know, I've been using this super soil, fantastic stuff. Well, I hope it is. <laughs> I don't see how it can't be. But what I want to do, I want to do an experiment with no super soil, uh, one in a hundred mix, which is the maximum you should go to, and one in a thousand, which is the norm. Now, I treated my plots, so I can't use my plots, and it would be too unfair anyway because I've used different amendments over the years for onions and brassicas and so and so but what I have got is three of the pots that had tomatoes in in the greenhouse all been treated the same all had the same feed all bone dry with their hair roots left in there so I could do one with no super soil one with one in a hundred mix and one with one in a thousand mix to see what the results are see if there's any difference it's only a little trial it's not a massive trial it may be totally meaningless, we'll see. But what I need is your advice. Now, what do I grow? Now, if I grow, say, tomatoes, then the tomatoes depend on pollinators. And if one plant has more pollinators than the other, there'd be unfair results. So what can I grow? Flowers? Is it the same with flowers as well? No, because flowers grow anyway. But all that will be is a mass of flowers. So I thought maybe onions, and I've got some big onions growing. So if all the onions out of the plugs are the same, I could try them. Or potato. If I do a potato, I might have one might have more eyes than the other. And so on. So what do you think? Any ideas I haven't thought of? I'm, I'm tending towards an onion. And then you can weigh the onion at the end, you know. You'd, you'd think that... Uh, and no nutrient and uh, basically I'm confused I don't know what to do stick a comment down there with what you think and uh, you know I'll go through them all and probably some fantastic idea I've not thought of <laughs>